Check this guy out. Today on the patio, we are doing a spatchcock chicken. It's been dry brined for about 30 hours and we're using the upper rack on the Komodo Komodo, so we're gonna get some of that amazing radiant heat that Komodos are known for. It's gonna be delicious. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? My name is Jake, and today we're doing some chicken. But not just any chicken, we are spatchcocking it, dry brining it, we're doing it direct fire so all that fatty goodness can drip over the lump and give us some flavor, and we're using the very top rack of the Komodo Komodo, so it's gonna be cooking here, which means we're gonna use this whole dome to fire some heat energy into the skin, make some nice crispy skin. I think it's gonna be delicious. Before we can do that, we gotta get our Komodo Komodo going. Let me show you how we did that. So let's bring you up to speed. So the Komodo Komodo is running at 350. We're using the basket splitter, only one quarter of it. So I'm using three quarters open. I put in some Bear Mountain Hickory chunks in there. Then we filled up with some lump. We lit that up with our grill baser grill gun and now we're rolling. It's been about 20 minutes since we hit our temperatures there. I want to get the, the dome nice and heat soaked for this because part of doing this is we're going to take advantage of that refractory cement and fire that heat energy in there and get some crispy skin. This guy is a chicken from Meat and Bone, newer meat partner of the channel. And what we've done here is we spatchcocked it. We took out the backbone. And then I took a very sharp knife, we took out the breastplate and I carved alongside of the rib cage. Took my time, if you've never done this before, it can be a little bit intimidating, just take your time. And just run your knife, do little slices and keep lifting it up in a way and eventually what'll happen is you'll get that, the cartilage out, all the, the rib cage and everything out. And now what'll happen is first for our dry brine, I was able to really spread it out and second, when we go to make some cuts here, in like two cuts with a big knife, I've got four pieces and don't have to worry about all the bones. So it makes it easy. And then the other advantage there is, is that when you flip it over, I can season all that meat underneath. So today we're using Meat Church's brand new, bring it over here, it's called Blanco. It says steak and everything else seasoning, but it's an all purpose. I think it's gonna be delicious on chicken. It's actually the first time I'm trying it, but, if you don't know, you should know. For the rest of the summer, Rum and Cook 11 gets you 11% off of rubs, seasonings, marinades from epibq.com. So if you need some more seasonings or you haven't tried this one, you want to try it out, you can get some meat church there. All the user seasonings, cattlemen girls, a whole bunch of stuff. Check out that discount code down below. So we gave a nice heavy coat on the bottom. Then we gave a nice heavy coat on the top, and I mean, I went heavy. And then it's been on a cooling rack so we can have some air circulating around it for, I think it's about, about 31 hours right now. Um, I've been kind of putting this one off because I'm in the sun, and if you can't tell by the sweat, it is hot out here. The humidity is through the roof. Uh, but anyhow, so what we're doing here is we're going to put this on. I am going to use my chef's temp. Pro Temp Plus, I have a uh, pork butt going on in the yoder at the same time. So we're gonna use, in the back here, I've got my other probe, I've got a little mini probe. We're gonna use that today for this cook. When I get two cooks going at a time, sometimes, <laughs> more than sometimes, I forget how long I've been cooking what. <laughs> if we're gonna be uh, honest here, so, Having this is, is a little bit helpful. Um, as you can tell, it is uh, it's saying 113 on this probe, just sitting out here, and this wasn't even sitting in the sun, just to give you an idea. So we are going to do some, oh, we're not doing pork, I'm doing pork over there. We're gonna do some poultry, and we're gonna do some chicken, a whole chicken, and 150 for doneness is gonna be about perfect. So we got that there, let me just stop that. When you set your temperature on here, you probably heard the beep over here, so that means we're good. And what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna put this in the breast, right in the middle, like so. And uh, I think we're gonna throw this on here. We'll take this guy here. You're gonna need two hands because 
it's a little floppy without the rib cage there. Oh, listen, that sizzle. Got some shade there, sir. I can't, can't give you a better lighting there, but this is gonna sit there. I mean, I almost think I could have put some oil down on that, but I think we're gonna be good. I mean, we're right over the lump there. This is gonna start to warm up and drip down there. Close this guy up. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna hydrate. Cheers, I'll see you in a little bit. And just like that, our chicken is done. Let's pull this off so you can have a look at it. Now, the one thing that we did here is, I think if I was to redo this, I would actually do it around 300. And here's why. I ended up pushing it just a little higher so I could get my skin to get the way that I wanted it. Now, we achieved the result that I'm looking for, but I ended up taking the breast up to 165 to get there. If I was closer to 300, I could have a little bit more time to get our skin done and we could pull it off a little sooner. So if we're using our X10 here, you can see, it's, uh, Let's see if that's coming across there. Probably not, uh, one, 183 there, okay? And then our, we're 167 in our breasts, okay? So we're a little higher than I would typically want us to be, but we're gonna let it rest and see how we did. Let's have a look at, the, it is crispy, I'll tell you that. Look at that crispiness on the bottom, man. The bottom looks super good. I mean, look at that. Wow. We gotta let this thing cool down, but I got a little piece of skin off the bottom. Tastes quite good right there. So we'll let this cool down for about uh, 10 minutes. The moment of truth. Let's dig in and try this guy. Now this is actually for my wife, so I'm not having too much of it. She loves chicken. So you remember, we removed the rib cage. So we can just go like that. We can go like that. <laughs> and we can go like that. Skin's a little crispy there. And now we've got four beautiful pieces. Give a piece here with the skin. You can just see how crunchy that is. Surprisingly, it's actually more juicier than I expected. It's pretty darn good. I have to go in here for another bite. I mean, you can see the moisture in there. I'm actually kind of shocked at how juicy that is considering I took it higher than I wanted to. Normally, you want to pull it off around 50, but, or 150, 155. But, I mean, you can literally see it running there. So, the skin has got a ton of flavor. That Blanco rub tastes really good, rounds it out quite nicely. Look, like I said, the only thing I would change on this is I would drop my temperatures down to 300 so I didn't cook quite as quick. This cooked in 35 minutes, just to give you an idea, right? So drop it down to 300, it's probably gonna take, I don't know, uh, maybe closer to 45 to 55 minutes, but it'll allow that skin to get a little bit more browner. This is crispy, but it'll also allow it to get uh, just a little bit more bite through if you slow it down a little bit. But look, I'm definitely not complaining about this. If you like chicken, I got a video for you. Check it out right here. We used the duck hanger and we did a couple chickens and it turned out pretty darn good. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.